Hello everyone and welcome to the ninth video in this Building the Ultimate SharePoint Online Intranet series. In this video, we're going to talk about the Organizational Assets Library. I'm joined by my good friend Sebastian. Seb, top shape? Yeah, still. <laughs> uh, I have another coffee. Uh, so <laughs> I, I, I'm getting more and more and more hype. That's that's good. Uh, by the end, you're going to be shaking on the keyboard uh, well, yeah. <laughs> while typing PowerShell. Maybe before the end. Let's see how that goes. <laughs> For those of you that are, have just joined us, this is actually the ninth video in a series in which we have covered from how to get started to all the way how to have an awesome intranet in modern SharePoint Online. And in this specific video, we're going to talk about the organizational assets library. So I think we're ready to get started, Seb. Absolutely. Uh, let's get rolling. Before we go into demo, let's actually do a little bit of slides. You know, we're not big fans of slides, but we got to talk a bit about what is the organizational assets library. The organizational assets library is a central location to store and manage assets for all of your users to see. And this can include images such as uh, stock pictures, logos, things like that, as well as Microsoft Office templates, because I'm sure many big organizations have their pre-made templates, whether it's for Word, for Excel, for PowerPoint. And those are often inside of the intranet anyway, because it's a brand asset in a way you want to push. Yeah. So it lives inside of the intranet, but the organization assets library makes that integration a bit better. So first of all, for pictures, it allows us to have one tab. Remember when we add a picture to news, whether it's the header image or whether it's inside the content, you're going to have a nice tab there called your organization where you can see all of the different libraries and people will be able to directly from the news or from the page select images from there. As for the office uh, templates, directly in PowerPoint, Excel, or Word, they're going to have a tab with your organization name and then they're going to see the different libraries you have they're going to be able to browse them and they're going to be able to select the template that they want to start with. Uh, just two more slides before the demo. Uh, <laughs> you can have multiple image libraries and multiple office libraries inside your tenant, but a maximum of 30, which to be honest, should be more than enough. I don't think you should have uh, more than 30. And they must all be on the same site, which usually is not a problem because we have a brand asset site or a marketing site and everything is in there anyway. Each organizational assets library is technically a document library inside a SharePoint site. So you just create a normal document library, you add your content in it, and then kind of like the hub site, you designate that library as an organizational assets library. So again, you can create a brand new site uh, for it, uh, only for that, or it can be your marketing sites, however you want to manage it, as long as they're all on the same site. And how do we add it? Uh, we paid a lunch to our SharePoint Online administrator because it's with PowerShell. So this is one of the things that, again, because it's so visible, in my opinion, that everybody can directly get content from there. You even have a few more technical choices, such as what's the CDN type between public or private. Uh, Seb, you want to explain it two minutes what the CDN is? Yep. So basically, as these are assets are fairly heavy in, in, in weight, right? When you want to use a beautiful image, you're going to have two, three, four, five megabyte pictures. Um, two, four, 10 megabyte pictures are great for the user because they're giving a great experience, but are absolutely horrible in 
a website or in that case in an intranet because they're slow to be loaded because you still need to transfer through the wire these 10 megabytes. So what we're doing is uh, we enhance this capability by storing the picture as close as possible to the user. So there are nodes or servers all around the world uh, that are serving these files. These are called CDN, so Content Delivery Network. Um, now they're served there once, and then afterwards they're cached in your browser. So the next time you go see that super beautiful news, you're not going to have to redownload the file. It's going to be cached in your browser. So that's great, but you want to keep in mind that a CDN is something that is not secured by default. So when we say public, I can grab the public link and without being authenticated to an internet, I can have access to that asset. I can just put it in the browser and it's going to show. What does it mean? It means that uh, don't store anything that could become a, um, a leak. Um, just think about your images that could be like banner images with um, people on it or even with like a, a big a, a new uh, product exactly that's not yet announced and things like that exactly so for stock images absolutely not an issue i think it's definitely okay to go public yeah. well depending on on the licensing of your stock images <laughs> also yeah. but um i think what is better is to use the private cdn which adds a little bit of um it's a little bit less performant as it needs to check for authentication but at least you're always sure so when you select the type um, I would advise to always go private on, unless there's really a reason why you want to go public. For for the organization asset library, I agree. Uh, yeah. Always go. I mean, for me, it's always go private. But there's some things. For example, Seb, you're a dev. When you use like standard JavaScript libraries that people can download anyway, that can be public and things like that. So there's yeah. a use case for public CDN as well. But for me, for any type of content that's specific to the enterprise, usually I go private. Yeah, absolutely. And so that's what we, we we would encourage people to use. But it's something that you, you need to be aware. It's it's available and it's going to speed up a lot your intranet. So have a look at this. Awesome. Okay, so now let's go to the demo. First of all, I will just go create a new a news post here. Doesn't matter, I'll take the visual, create post. And this is something that, by the way, we have already configured because it takes up to, I would say 24 to a lot more hours, maybe it's 96, until your configurations are visible anywhere. Now you might get lucky, the demo gogs might be with you, you might configure it, and then uh, you go for a coffee, you come back and it's ready. But uh, yeah, chances are it's going to take up to one week until it's visible even inside Office. So, yeah, don't open a ticket until you waited one week. That's all I'm <laughs> going to say. If I go to change image now, and uh, there's many ways to configure it. I'll go under your organization. You see right now we've only set one library as an example so you can see what it looks like. Uh, so it's the documents library. And then inside I can even see the folders. I can, let's say, go to stock photos, show it as tiles, and then I'll see many of the stock pictures that I have from my organization. If you want to have, and I'll just do open, so I add this one here, so you can show it as an example. Uh, this is the code that Seb does all day, color-coded like that and everything. <laughs> yeah, uh, sure. <laughs> <laughs> uh, something that's really important, and I think a lot of admins miss that, so we actually did it on purpose just to show you the difference. You see, I went here in my organization, it just says documents without anything. Versus when I had it in the slides, it was like super, super pretty with an icon and everything. It was really a lot nicer. So this is the thumbnail image. When your admin configures it, they can configure a thumbnail image that will be shown behind here. So that will make it a lot prettier. And I really wanted to show you the difference. And even if you can, use folders you're allowed to use folders nothing is wrong with it i still if you're not close to that 30 library limit 
I would still do one different library per topic. This way, it kind of shows us a bit like this, where you have people directly see the categories right from the start instead of going to like pictures, stock pictures, stock pictures of laptops, and they go to the whole folder structure. Again, this will depend on how how many categories you have because of that 30 asset limit. So it's a big, it depends. But if you only have two or three, make different libraries. In my opinion, it's a lot easier to use. So this is for the uh, pictures. Uh, something else that maybe we should mention, Seb, uh, I have a web search over here. Since we're on the topic, I don't think we mentioned it yet, but it's kind of important. By default with SharePoint Online, you have a web search here, which allows people to actually search for images on Bing. But something that you need to be aware of, and it's here at the bottom, you're responsible for respecting other rights, including copyright. Now, let's be honest, how many of your users actually know about Creative Commons, MIT licensing, and all of the other tons of licensing that I don't even really know what they mean, to be honest. Uh, so a lot of organizations actually want to disable this because they're, you don't want people to, by mistake, use a certain image inside your internet, and then you realize that it's copyrighted, uh, and you get in all that trouble. You can actually disable the web search. It must be done via PowerShell as well. I already have a YouTube video on it, so I'll put it in the description below. I will not cover that part in this video, but just wanted to mention that you can disable the web search and in a way force people to either use your organization or the stock images provided by Microsoft, which again, those are provided by Microsoft, they have the right licensing, and there's a ton of free and beautiful ones you can use uh, over there. So this is it for the images part. And if we take a look at uh, how it looks like in the back again, just your super normal document library, nothing super exciting here. You have folders, you go in here and then you just uh, upload your images and they're available. So nothing super fancy, just a normal document library that your admin designated as an organizational asset library. From For the office part of it, now we configured it in this tenant, but we got hit by the same uh, demagogues delay that the one in our tenant isn't yet visible. So I'll show you what it looks like on another tenant. You see, here I'm logged in into actual two tenants. I have my globalmantics.org and vnext solutions. Here under vnext solutions, I have two different libraries, internal presentations, well here and external presentations here. They both have beautiful thumbnails. I can click on it and then I can see all of the different templates. For example, I can click on one and then it will start from that template. And as you can see, it actually opens directly from SharePoint, so it always gets the latest one. So that can be a cool way to tell people, hey, directly from PowerPoint, you can start with the template, and when we update the template, all of your new ones will automatically be updated. So And, and let's, is... be, let, let's be honest here. I think this is kind of a hidden feature of, of the assets library, but one of the most powerful one when you're looking for that powerpoint template right what are you doing today you're trying to figure out a document that has this template that was created kind of lately yeah. so you uh, you have the kind of latest version of that template and then you create a document and 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 you forget to like hide slides there's content that is mixed up. this is the best way to get things uh yeah. going and and it's it's available. It's part of the software. So take advantage of it. That's that's awesome. Oh yeah, it's definitely something that a lot of enterprises had a need before. And even if they were making them available in a document library, you had to navigate there, download a copy and everything. Now directly from PowerPoint, you have access to the latest ones and so much prettier and easier to yeah. use. And yeah, 
a lot, a lot easier. Agreed. Okay, I think this is it for the organizational uh, asset library. I keep wanting to say organizational news site, <laughs> but that's a topic for the next video. I don't know why. I, I'm I'm too excited about the series. I'm looking. I'm <laughs> skipping ahead uh, in my PowerPoint slides here. Uh, uh, any other any other things you wanted to add, Seb, about this one? I think we're good. Uh, I think it's a simple yet super effective feature. Take advantage of it. Um, buy your uh, admin uh, one or two launches and 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 ensure that this uh, gets gets set for your um, um, for environment. Think also about governance for these org assets. If you want to make sure that everything is official in there, um, uh, we already discussed about how you can do approval on pages. But think about how you could do approval on documents also, and and with Flow and Power Automate, uh, feel free to have a look at it and put that governance in place just to make sure that yeah, it's 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 an official picture, but it's also vetted by the entire organization. That's a very good point. People need to be able to trust everything that comes from there. So always have an approval workflow uh, to go through the right people to make sure that licensing is right, that everything is on point. Absolutely. Awesome. Well, this is it for this video. Thank you very much for watching. If you haven't subscribed yet, make sure you like the video, subscribe to the channel. And in the next video, part of this series, we're going to learn about the home site and organizational news site that I keep thinking about. But we're going to learn how to designate our hub as the home site, configure the global navigation, and a bunch of other interesting things. Until then, thank you very much for watching and see you soon.